129. Water at 100 pounds per minute and 60 degrees and steam at 100 pounds per minute and 600 degrees, both at atmospheric pressure, enter an insulated chamber through separate inlets. After thorough mixing, 200 pounds per minute of the product is withdrawn at atmospheric pressure. The quality of the steam in the product stream is most nearly what? So let's write an energy balance for this scenario. We have this energy being transferred in via the water, which we'll call Q dot water. And then we have some energy being transferred in by this inlet steam, call that Q dot steam. And then there's energy being removed from the products, we'll call that Q dot products. So now let's expand on that because we have mass flow rate and there's going to be some enthalpy as associated with each of the streams. So we could say m dot water times the enthalpy of water as it flows in plus the mass flow rate of the steam times the enthalpy of the steam as it flows in equals the mass flow rate of the products which we know is 200 times the enthalpy of the products as that flows out. And at the end since we know the pressure of the product stream is atmospheric pressure. If we know the enthalpy, we should be able to figure out the quality. So that's where we're headed. So we know the mass flow rates and we're looking for the enthalpy of the product stream. So now we have to do a bit of work to specify the enthalpy of the water and the enthalpy of the steam at the inlets. So let's start by talking about the water. There's a couple of ways you can do this. One is that you can go to app 23A, the steam table, and you can look up H sub F enthalpy of fluid of a liquid at a known temperature. Our temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit and you'll find out that that enthalpy is 28 BTU per pound. Now what's a little strange about this is what you're actually looking up is the enthalpy of saturated water. So it has a quality of zero. It's all the way over to the left side of the curve and the pressure at that point is not atmospheric. But at that point you're dealing with a compressed liquid so its enthalpy isn't really dependent on pressure so much since it's liquid water. It's really more dependent on temperature. And that's why this method is acceptable. Another way to think about it that you may be more comfortable with, this term can be, instead of m dot h, it could be mcp delta t, where h is being approximated by cp delta t, where cp is one BTU per pound degree Fahrenheit, and delta T is the difference between 60 degrees and the freezing point of water, because that's when it would be considered to have zero enthalpy. So the delta T then becomes 60 minus 32, which is 28. And then 28 times one, you end up with the same answer, 28 BTU per pound. So you can think about it both ways, and that's a good way to sense check but regardless of how you approach it, the enthalpy of liquid water at 60 degrees is about 28 BTU per pound. So that's gonna be our HWN. Then for the enthalpy of steam, we're gonna use app 23C, which is the superheated steam table. And we know that we have a temperature of 600 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure that's atmospheric, so 14.7 PSI. And given those two facts, we can look up in the table and find the enthalpy it's 1335.3 BTU per pound. Okay, so let's give ourselves some room and plug in these values. So for the water, we have 100 pounds per minute times 28 BTU per pound plus 100 pounds per minute times 1335.3 BTU per pound equals the products, which is 200 pounds per minute times an unknown enthalpy, which we're calling HP out for now. So algebraically, we can solve for HP out and that works out to 682 BTU per pound. Now we don't actually know what this is. We had a superheated steam mixing with liquid water. So there's a few possibilities here. It could be that the energy in that steam was so overwhelming that it turned the water into a vapor as well. It boiled it and superheated it. And now the resulting mixture is still superheated. That's completely possible if, there's, if there was enough energy, if it was sufficiently superheated to begin with. Another alternative is that the cold water dragged the temperature of the steam down and condensed all of it, and now we just have liquid water. Or the answer could be somewhere in between, which is to say that some of the superheated steam condensed, and now the resultant mixture has some quality that's between liquid water 
and saturated steam, it's this it's this mixture of a quality that's between zero and one, and that's the quality that we want to find. So in order to unpack that, let's use this enthalpy that we've now solved for, and the fact that we know the pressure is atmospheric pressure, P equals 14.7 PSI, and we'll look in app 23B, again the steam table organized by pressure, looking at the line of P equals 14.7 PSI, and let's check out some of the enthalpies in that table. We have HF, the enthalpy when the quality is zero, is 180 BTU per pound, and the enthalpy of saturated steam would be 1150, and the difference between those, which is the enthalpy of vaporization, is 970. So since the enthalpy we solved for 682 is between HF and HG, we know that it is indeed a mixture with a quality that's somewhere between zero and one. It looks like it's a little closer to HG, so we should expect a quality that's north of 50%. To actually solve for that, quality of the products, we'll need to find the difference between what we have, 682, and the bottom end, 180, divided by the difference between the two. So there's two ways you can do this. You can do 1150 minus 180, or you can just realize that 970 is that difference, and just divide by that. And solving that, we get 0.517. So indeed, the quality is just north of 50%. And one of the answer choices is 0.52, so that's perfect.